Welcome to Team Wild's Carnivore. Last week you saw part one of my Red Stag Butchery Masterclass. If you missed it, click the link now. Otherwise, keep watching for part two. Okay, so now we're going to do the loins. As you can see, this is where the shoulder sat onto the front of the loins. Again, you can see a bit of damage there that's run down into the seam of the side, but that's fine. We're going to turn him so he's facing away with us. You've got the back. Here's a bit of gristle again, right the way down to his bum. And that's where we're going to start. What we're interested in here are the back straps, the sirloin if you like. And that's what we're going to take out now. So we're just going to ease down on the top there. As you can see, the gristle showing there again. We're taking that down there, like so. And there you can see the edge of the sirloin, the loin. Start to show itself. That's without using any knife. And you can see the ribs start to move underneath it. And I'm not using a knife at all there. You can see the ribs? Is it all starting to come away? And we're going to loosen it now. We're going to go back up to the bone. As in the shoulder when we took the cage bone off, it's the same bone that runs down spine of the animal. We're just going to run the knife down it. Staying away from the fillet, always cutting towards the bone so you're not damaging it. And coming from the underneath back to where we've just taken the and it'll come out. And that's one side of the loin. It's a beautiful piece of meat. See the silver bit on the top of the on the top of the loin? It's a piece of gristle which attached itself to the main piece of gristle which is on the spine, which helped it move and contract the muscles and everything else. And I'm going to have to take that off because it's quite thick. Just starting on the edge and very gently. Rub your knife along it. And as you get into it, you can see the knife moving underneath the gristle. You see that? Which is all good. And if you've been into a restaurant or a pub or anywhere else, and there's venison medallions on the menu, nine times out of ten, this is what you'll have had. There they are. That is absolutely fantastic. So, what would you do with your sirloin? It is, it is steak, your loin is steak. It's, you don't want to use it for anything else really. It's beautiful. You could use it as doing a beef wellington, cut it to whatever length you wanted, or beef wellington, venison wellington, whatever you want to do. But like I say, we use, I like to use it as medallions and just cut it. about an inch thick. As you can see, the width of the gristle always gives you a reasonable, reasonable guide. If you start on the outside of it, with a knife angle just on the inside like that, and just run it down, you know you're not going to be doing too much wrong. As I said, you can just get your fingers in there, right at the top, and just peel it off. That was the bit of blood which was set up there. And as it's come away, you can see what I mean by going down the seams of the muscles. It's all collected in there. It's not affected the bit of the flank on the outside. It's not affected the loin at all. It's just, it's just run down the seam. 
I'm just going to do the same again. Run down the top of the bone, always cutting towards the bone, so you don't cut into your fillet. I keep calling it fillet. And take them off again, and just run down. Always cutting towards the bone, as we've said before. And he comes out. Quite simple. There we go. Okay, as you can see, we've got the one that we've taken the gristle off, we've got the one that we haven't. And as I said before, turn it over on the side. You can see the thickness of the gristle there that runs on top of the loin. You just put your knife in and start and gently ease it back. It's quite simple, just keep following it. Just remember to keep your knife angled up. And as you can see, you can see your knife working. Working without, you can see it through the gristle. But it's not damaging the loin at all. And just keep working it and it'll come off quite clean. And that's what you'll end up with. Okay, we're inside here, we're inside now, and these are the fillets, like your fillet steak, which run on the inside. Sometimes it's called undercut because it's on the inside, the underneath of the animal. These are the kidneys that have been inspected. You can take those out, which contain, but got a lot of fat around them, and that's to protect them from any knocks or bangs. I'm just going to take the fat off the top there, like so of that and you can see the fillets there and it's just from there to there that's why they're so expensive you can also see the bone running down the middle again it's always a good guide for you I'm just going to go into the side of the bone working towards the bone again like so always working on the bone side it's out like that. Nice and gentle. Just easing them out. And that they come. And that's one fillet from one side. Take the fat off. Take him off. And there you go. And that is the most expensive the most tenderest piece of meat on any animal. Now, you're going to say there's a lot, this is what we call flank on here, all on the side of the loin. Personally, I don't do anything with it apart from feed the dogs with it. Um, you can cook it, it goes very rubbery, um, it does a lot of work, it's hard working muscle, so basically apart from just stripping it off, boiling it up, feeding it to the dogs. I don't do anything with it. You can mess about with it and try and get bits and pieces off it. Like I say, personally I don't. So, if you wanted to, I'll show you how to do it really quickly. But it's the same again, it's easy. You're not worrying about anything. And just following it straight down the ribs to the edge of the brisket. Follow it up. Just flaying away as if you were as if you were skinning really. And just keep going. The edge of the bone, follow it down. There you go. If you're trying to eat that, you'd be chewing all day I like. It's, it's a tough piece of meat. So the dogs appreciate it, but that's about it. And then just slice it and dice it up. You can see there's a lot of sinew in there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ligaments and everything else. It's contracting and expanding all the time. So that's why I don't use it for anything else apart from dog food. But it's really, really simple to take off. Um, it does collect a lot of the blood and a lot of the trauma down the flank because as you're taking your animal, this is where the engine room is. It sits inside here. The heart and the lungs are everything. They're just sat inside there. So it takes a brunt of the damage of the bullet into the side. Whereas, as you can see, we've got broken ribs there. 
as the bullet went in to do the engine room and you get a lot of trauma in there and it's a lot of work for nothing so that's what we do we feed the dogs with it okay so that's the loins done tune in next week to team wilds carnivore to see part three of my red stag butchery masterclass subscribe to team wild tv for the best hunting air gun gear and tutorial videos on youtube